Welcome back to Making History in KSP 1.4, and it's time to do this next mission. Now, I'm not showing you the launch, of course, because the launch is very similar to what we've already done, but we have Valentina out here near the moon. And um, yeah, the mission is to go on an orbital spacewalk near the moon. And to be honest, the financial reward is not that great. However, quite satisfying out here. <laughs> so let's bring up, um, whoop, there we go, science here and now. And you'll see we have an EVA report we can do. And we get 14 signs for that. Uh, we can transmit it or we can just keep it. Keeping it is fine for now. And that is space just above the moon's midlands. Okay, so we can get a crew report here as well. And keep that. That's another nine. But notice that that is um, biome specific. So if we fast forward a little bit, and we should have got that mission done. Yep. If we fast forward a little bit, here we go again. So lowlands now, so we can EVA. Grab an EVA report, get another 14 science. Board. Shouldn't matter that we uh, our craft is, craft is spinning slightly, that's just because Val keeps getting in and out of it. Um, in earlier KSP versions, that used to be a bit of a hazard since they used to let go. I hope that isn't true anymore. Uh, I haven't seen it recently, but uh, yeah, they did used to fall off when they get out. And that was a bit of a, you know, slightly panic inducing, because, not because you were out of the spacecraft, but because your spacecraft was spinning, so you had to get back to the hatch while it was spinning away. In any case, um, I've got lots and lots of science to get now, because we can uh, then speed up. Of course, without modded uh, persistent rotation, you will stop during time warp, so that is one way to stop your spacecraft from spinning. I'd prefer that to be sort of part of the base game, to be honest. I'd, I'd really prefer us to... Oh, we just missed that crater. Um, yeah. I'd really prefer us to be able to um, to keep things spinning as part of the base game. But we'll see on that front. I'm going to go and do this, all this science, off camera. And then I'll see you back either at the Space Center or for plotting our return maneuver. Ooh, one other thing I should mention. Uh, I have actually got an orbit that is both low and high space. So that we can get space high and space low for each of the biomes. And if you want to know how much science you've got left to go, if you bring up the regular X science with this button, scroll down, you'll get to EVA report section when in space near the moon. So we have all the nearby to the moon EVA reports, and you'll see a lot of them are now craters. Canyons is probably a small one as well. Uh, crater, crater, and a far side basin. So we're in a polar orbit, so we should eventually pass over all of them. But then if we carry on scrolling down, there is EVA reports while landed at the moon. Um, is there any more? I think the space high will probably be further up, I would have thought. Uh, space near Kerbin. It's not showing space high. Interesting. In any case, uh, I've got lots of, lots of work to do. Now, I didn't get them all, but I did get significant numbers of them. Uh, 272 science. If you have a look at the EVA reports here, we've got crew report and space near. EVA report from just above. Lots of different places from high over the moon. So it looks like there's just only one high, which is fine. Um, lots and lots and lots more from the moon. And then a couple that is like just above Kerbin Shore. So while descending with a parachute, just nipped outside for a quick trip to get an EVA report. And uh, Kerbin's upper atmosphere as well. So just while you're, say, between 70 and 60, it seems to be okay to get out, um, you know, in the kind of heavy burn phase of your descent at that point, and flying over Kerbin's grasslands. So similar kind of thing there. And uh, yeah, 272 signs. I'm happy with that one. And uh, we get some funds back, but that's not, not, <laughs> not the important part by any means. So let's take a look into research. So, I think the one I mentioned previously is the one we wanted next, is this fuel systems. Just so much more flexibility in here. One, larger fuel tanks. Two, fuel ducts. Three, the um, the Russian-style Korolev Cross sort of deploying boosters. And these are really, really quite powerful, uh, obviously, with engines attached. And, uh, yeah, we, we will get those as well. And, of course, they're much uh, more streamlined than our... Um, kick motor kind of ones that we have at the moment. So let's research that one. And which ones we want to purchase. I definitely want to purchase these. Absolutely. And definitely that fuel tank. Um, not too concerned about the others just yet. Those are the larger style fuel tanks, I believe. 
and the adapters. So that's when we go up to larger engines. And why not purchase this? Because, you know, I want to see what they're like and if they fit okay on the, um, the smaller rockets that we're currently using. What else do we want? I think I almost certainly want this. So we want the Landican Mark 1. Uh, this is a more advanced um, reaction wheel, so a larger one. Maybe more appropriate for this uh, this sort of three-man pomegranate re-entry module, the Russian style, or indeed the Mark II command pod. And the Mark II may be uh, one possible way that we can uh, get a, a lander. You can do this lander can, of course, or you can build things around command pods either way. But regardless, I want RCS thrusters, and I would like that monoprop tank. Um, and I think that's it for now. We may all come back and grab those as well. That leaves us with 92.4 science, conveniently and completely accidentally. Um, <laughs> just the right kind of amount for another node here. So aerodynamics, uh, not too concerned with it would be if I was doing a planes playthrough. Landing is actually pretty useful. It's got the larger heat shields. The better landing struts, which will be useful for landers, of course. Bigger parachutes landing gears and the launch escape system. So well, that's not really the Kerbal way. If, if things blow up, uh, Kerbals tend to just sort of blow up with them. However, um, yeah, what else should we get? The junior docking port, oh, which we're going to need to go through anyway. Uh, hitchhiker storage module. So that's uh, the kind of first space station sort of block that we can get. And the Rover Max wheels, they're electrically powered. Motorized. Um, or we can just grab the heavy rocketry node. And that'll give us more options there. I think I'm going to grab that. Just because I want to play around with the AJ-10. Uh, just like in my realistic playthrough. Which you can also find on the channel. I just want to see what it, the, the vanilla Kerbal version of it's like. So let's take a look at some of those in the VAB. So here's our paltry and up to now the Mooner Express, which has got these really uncontrollable boosters at the bottom. So let's just get rid of those. <laughs> In fact, uh, should we start a new vehicle? Uh, we can just save it, all right? So let's save this as the Mooner... Hmm, Mooner Liner. And save that. So what have we got with these fuel tanks? We've got these. They're a little bit large <laughs> for this rocket. Yes, maybe we should wait for them, I guess. Although, I guess they're outboard tanks, so we could use them. Uh, if we're going to try them, at least we should look at... Uh, maybe I need to buy that, actually. Uh, let's see what size this is. It's going to be huge, I think, and outsized. Yeah, it is kind of huge. Um, can we get away with these? Maybe. Maybe. Before we do that, however, I'm going to take these off. I'm going to take these off. And then we've got one, two, three, four. So let's take those off and let's replace them with the fuel tanks. Which is double the size. So we're back to where we started, but with less parts. 15 parts. So again, let's just bring that to four of these and put them back on just to help with lower down in the atmosphere. So, now did I have another? Yeah, I did have one right there. If you let me attach. And we're gonna go down to one, just to grab this into the right place. And let's see what that does. Is that in the right place? Or, it's always a problem with these, uh, with these detachment uh, issues. They never, Quite correct. There we go, I think. Yeah, that looks right. Of course, we'll have to use the, uh, the move tool just to bring that down a little bit. Ah, oh, and that's moved in. Let's just change this, turn the snap off, and then let's just get this correct. That looks about right ish. And go back to place mode, grab this, and then we'll, <laughs> we clearly can only deal with two of these. I mean, we could deal with four, but um, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Uh, turn snap back on. 
Yeah. <laughs> they look ridiculously outsized. However, um, let's see what the thrust to weight ratio is like once we have some engines on here. And in fact, uh, what we may want to do is use these fuel ducts uh, just to connect these. There are the separatrons that are built in to our main fuel tank. Like that. All right, and then, um, yeah, let, let's have a look. So uh, at the moment that is here, it needs to be further further up by far. And then are we going to turn them all on at once? Possibly. But you can see, obviously, that um, our... Yeah. Um, <laughs> we have, don't have enough thrust to weight ratio to take off. So what I'm going to do is play around, maybe have a look at different engines. What engines do we have? Obviously, the... The engines are meant for them. We don't have yet. Uh, that's the upper stage. And I'm going to purchase that Wolfhound anyway. So just so I can show you the size of the thing. Yeah. As you can see, it's meant for the next size up. So that will probably be when we have an upper stage. Uh, with a decent sized lander on it. That seems like something to do. Poodle is again next stage up. As is the skipper. So uh, we can't do anything with those. However, we could put Reliance on these. And that would make it much more um, appropriate, I guess, the right term. So we want... Why is there... A... Are these actually boosters? They're just fuel tanks. Why is there a separate... Oh, that, that may be the separation... Or rather, this, the, um, the separatrons. So we want those in the same stage as these, I assume. Yeah. And then we're back down to... A decent rocket. So we've got 2.21 thrust to weight ratio on launch. And we have then 1.38 once these tanks go. Of course, they are fuel they are fuel ducted to our main ones. So once they go a minute in, the, the main one should still be absolutely full, which will be pretty good. So let's save that. This is 14,887. And let's just open um a five nine so six k was what we have in delta v with this one let's take a look at what the moon express is like okay so that's five and a half k so we will end up with an upper stage uh probably this this main stage here in our moon aligner will inject us over towards the moon quite easily now with these i know this looks a little ridiculous because they're bigger than the actual main main stage but um yeah we don't have any deal do we have any larger fuel tanks uh, probably a part count problem if we do. Yeah, we're on 27, and we'd have to use small numbers of the larger fuel tanks. Uh, so that one, for instance, if we just... Uh, Rocket Max... Let's just take a look at the size of this one. Yeah, so we'd have to stack a few of those up. Same size as this, though. So, hmm... Maybe. But we'd have to also buy the Skipper, I think, as the main engine. So another 14,000. And then that would fit... Um, just Let me just put this under here. For, oh, oh, no! Um, undo, undo. Undo, please. Please undo. I know you want to do that. Undo. Ha! There we go. Great. Uh, let's get rid of those. Uh, I wanted to grab this and then just put that under here temporarily. Move you up. Just to give you an idea of the rocket size, so um, skipper. So that would be the main sort of takeoff stage, the, the first stage, and then we'd have a second stage further up. So we could move across the larger rockets, but we don't necessarily need it just yet. Maybe when we get our first lander going. In any case, this is a new quick rocket to the moon. And because I wanted to sit, get you guys to see the difference, this is what would happen if we changed it to be a larger center stage. I changed my mind, I thought I'd better build one anyway. The Muna Extra Liner, as this case may be, um, it needs these two outboard boosters or some kind of outboard boosters to get it off the ground because without them, it's literally one to one. It's thrust to waste duration is 0.99, so it wouldn't take off without them. But once it's taken off, of course, and they disengage, it's got enough power to keep going. So we got two T-30s Reliance, um, because we don't have the other engines yet. And once they disengage, you've got this stage, and that will disengage here. And then we'll have a Wolfhound. Now, you don't necessarily need to have this. If you don't, 
then you end up with something like, let me just put that back for a second. So this is, uh, oops, the staging messed up now. I need to get that staging correct. Uh, these aren't actually um, fuel ducted, so I guess we should just put that back in. Uh, just to make sure we're efficient as possible with these. Uh, there to there. Okay, so all three engines fire first, then separators and these. Then both of those can go together. And we've got 8,902. Okay, so the other thing you can do, I guess, and let me just save this first, is we can just take those off, take this off, and then you can just have a single stage. 6,995. It is a bit cheaper, but it uh, clearly is, well, in fact, no, that, that, that's not good because it's staging is messed up again. Um, yeah, let me just make sure that's right. Just take a bit of finagling with these sometimes. Uh, 7,000, okay. So it would take off. When they disengage, it's not got enough thrust to weight ratio to, to go straight up, but by that point, it'll be heading upwards quite quickly and uh, should take off just fine. But 7,000, however, the cost is only a little bit less for something that is over 1,000 delta V less. Um, so, yeah, I think we can just open up the uh, don't save. Move an extra liner again. You'll see what I mean. So, yeah, the difference is 2,000, which is only, you know, only 10%. But we get a much more capable vehicle because of it. Uh, now, we could fly this, but we really don't need it at this stage. It's it's more than, it's almost exactly double our existing craft. And because we don't have uh, any kind of lander on the top, we, or we don't need a lander just yet, uh, at least I think so, um, that um, this extra delta V will be a waste. It would have to, we'd have to go out a lot, lot further than the moon to to really need that delta V. So now we've done an EVA spacewalk around the moon, we get some new missions, specifically to plant a flag on the moon, so that does need a lander. We're not there just yet because the moon uh, lander is going to need more work. However, we also get a mission to explore Minmus. So fly by Minmus, gather scientific data from Minmus and return to Kerbin. That's just as easy, if not easier, than going to the moon. So we probably should take a look at our new craft and use it to get lots of money and some science and uh, yeah from Minmus so let's fly that as with any new craft we need a test pilot to fly this and Jeb has drawn the short straw um, time to take off with these uh, I may need to put more struts in them they seem a little bit larger than the main section but let's see how they go uh, throttle to full and off we go yeah they're wobbling a little bit so we probably want to um, to uh, have some struts from uh, the next launch, I think. So we're going to start turning, just as you might expect. And this will be more difficult to control, mainly just because of the power of these engines. So, you know, we'll, we'll get... <laughs> we will get to orbit, but uh, I'm going to do that. Uh, and then, you know, you can join me for, uh, for heading towards Mimbus. Actually, it'd be rude not to show you the booster separation, so we may as well do at least that part. So let me just bring this down. Should we get through the thicker part of the atmosphere? And this is where the um, the boosters. Oh, there they go. Ready for separation? Okay, so it's not a coral of cross, but it's more of a coral of line. <laughs> and we've got our rocket as we've had before, so we can head on up to orbit. Now, when I took off, you may have seen that I was inclined slightly to the south. And um, that was on purpose, We could because Minmus is inclined a little bit. So I'm a little bit closer to where Minmus is, so I can afford to burn just prograde rather than having some uh, correction maneuver. But we can probably correct, you know, halfway out just fine. As long as you're getting roughly in the right area, it's not too bad because, you know, you use so little delta V out here to correct things in, in this kind of orbital one, uh, path once you get to Minmus that it, it shouldn't matter too much at all. So uh, we now have uh, 25 minutes to wait, or more importantly, 25 minutes to warp, and you'll see that's our encounter with Minmus out there. So we've got this around here, so let's just head to around about here. And we're going to warp around the planet and back around. Now if I come out of map view for a second, you'll see I have a lot more fuel than I normally have. And that's just because those those new boosters, uh, they, they're just much, much better. 
a little bit more expensive, but uh, we actually have some control on the way up rather than none until those burst boosters burn out. And uh, well, there's the moon, quite happily. So in we come. We've only got a 33 second burn with this particular engine. Now, we may run out of fuel before that burn is complete, so we perhaps want to be a little bit early as far as that's concerned. So I'm going to rotate. And notice how slow it is at rotating now. So when we get to larger craft, we're going to want to put additional reaction wheels or RCS on there because just that little tiny reaction wheel we have in vanilla KSP on our control, um, uh, well, our uh, launch capsule, control capsule up here, is just not good enough for this kind of task, or at least for larger rockets. So uh, let's start early and let's see what we get to. So uh, this is 30 second burn. And will we have enough fuel? Mm, probably not. Let's see. Although, actually, well, that's not looking too good. That's not looking too bad, even. Uh, let's see how far out we get. And that will leave us with most of a full tank out there, which is very, very good indeed. Let us do maneuvers. And... Yeah, so we've still got fuel. And I just need to correct this just for the last few... few. There we go, 1.4. Will that be enough? May as well go to the yeah maneuver node. So out we come. You'll see we have a um, Minmus encounter out there. Let's just focus on Minmus so you'll see. But we're on a flyby course, so we've got to correct ourselves on the way out. Now, do we have... <laughs> Look, we don't really have enough liquid fuel to do that, so I think I'm going to get rid of this stage. And after seeing that we're minimum, I'm just going to engage this stage. And then we're back to our normal little uh, little craft here. So we can do the same thing we did with the moon, and I'm not going to show it on camera. All we have to do to fulfill the mission is gather some scientific data and return to Kerbin from a flyby. Uh, in our case, though, we can go fully into an orbit and do the same thing again. All we have to do is make sure that we can head out here somewhere. And then let's exit map view so you can see we're... We're heading out there, we've got some nice solar panels, time warp complete, and then we can make some maneuvers. So uh, it's going to be a very, very small maneuver, and we're just going to adjust our orbit inwards. It's currently got a periapsis of, ooh, quite high, 1,831,000 meters. So we can adjust the normal and the progress retrograde. So progress retrograde will adjust uh, this way, and anti-normal will adjust us in. So again, as you can see, very, very little delta V just to get really, really large changes at this particular range from Minmus. And of course, we can adjust with prograde again to bring ourselves in. And now that's a polar orbit. So just like before, we can bring ourselves to wherever we like. Remember, we'll get some from high, uh, but only one or two maybe, and then well, the rest will be from low. So if I go high first, get that EVA science, go low and then bring the other node in, so we're in a low orbit, we should be able to get all of Mimus's science. That said, um, we are... Whoops, let's just move around to the right point. It doesn't really matter much matter where we do this burn at the moment. As long as I get the roughly the right direction, it's fine. And as you can see, in comes the line with a very low amount of uh, thrust. In it comes. And that will do just fine. It doesn't have to be exact. Maybe we should go a little bit, a um, little bit retro, I want to say, just to try and get a polar, oh, on the wrong side, a little bit prograde, uh, just to get, uh, just to get a more polar orbit than that. Yeah, that'll do. Maybe a little bit more on the other side. It takes so little delta V here that you almost wouldn't want an RCS system just to be able to adjust this properly because uh, the regular engines are just far, far too powerful. So we can then just put in a node as we would normally do here and just pull retrograde. Whoops, too much. And we could even do a landing, but we'll get a separate mission for a landing, which will give us more money. So I'm not too concerned about that. All I do want is all that wonderful science. So there's 17. We can bring ourselves down to... 10k is actually safe for a member, so you can obviously see there we go. There we go, and we can just then bring ourselves here, warp in, 
in we come. Still haven't escaped from Kerbin, but that should happen very, very soon. At which point we should come all the way in here. There we go. And then we, we should align with a node. It's only a 10 second burn, so we're noting five seconds is what we're actually looking for. So let's just... Uh, and again, it doesn't actually matter too much because we'll end up in a polar orbit anyway. So let's just warp in. And then we just got a 10 second burn and we should be at Minmus. Or Minmus orbit anyway. Uh, yeah, anywhere here should do just fine. Let me just fast forward a little bit. That'll do. So, burn. And around comes our track. And in over the top. There we go. That should do fine. It's uh, seven. Let me just flip over. And it looks like we've got extra experience because now we've got all of the other nodes that we can... Um, that we can follow automatically. So let's just bring that up a little bit to there. Yeah, that looks all right. The downside of going this low is, of course, you can't time warp very fast. That's the, you know, nothing we can actually do on that one. However, we can get a crew report from here and we can keep that. And we can get an EVA report. EVA. Jeb is a two star pilot. EVA report. Keep that. And we now have enough technically to, um, to fulfill that mission. Just board again. And uh, yeah, I guess we can just keep it. No need to actually send it and use up any of our batteries. Let me just, uh, just rotate us a little bit. There we go. So we should have some solar panels towards the sun. And uh, now I can do the same thing for Mimus. Oh, there it is. That I did for uh, the moon. And I'm not going to show that on camera. Because you've seen it already. Okay, and there aren't as many uh, sort of biomes that we need to get this for near Minmus as the moon. So we've got EVA report on space near Minmus's highlands, midlands, lowlands, flats, and the various bits and pieces. There's nine total. Yeah, nine. So we've got all of those. So it's probably now it's a good time to get back to Kerbin. Now we're in a really low orbit around Minmus. So at this point, um, well, we... <laughs> It doesn't really much matter what we do. Uh, we got to, let's see, which way are we going round? Um, yeah, we're going down here. So if we just do a uh, something around here, it shouldn't matter too much. Just because we don't need a lot of Delta V to escape Minimus. Um, and we are sort of going sideways. So this will be an advantage to be here rather than pointing straight towards and back. So let's just, uh, in fact, no, hang on. Uh, I want to be going the other way, don't I? So let's just see if I can go this way and just uh, burn outwards. All right, so that gets, that gets us back into Kerbin's influence. And there is our periapsis, 15 million meters. We can keep playing with this, but we can also just uh, burn at the apoapsis once we leave Mimus's um, influence anyway. So let's just see what this does. It's going to start tilting our orbit, unfortunately, and say, yeah, see, uh, it's not quite uh, what we want. Play around with the normal vectors as well. I'll just turn things around. I think I'm just going to burn like this. And whoops, <laughs> let's turn on our SAS. Burn like this, and then we can get to an apoapsis. And then we can burn to bring our periapsis in as normal. So I'll see you back on the ground. And here we are back at the Space Center with over 245 science again. Oh, well, I'm not sure what we had in the first part of the episode. I need to rewatch it. In any case, lots and lots of stuff from Minmus and just above various biomes. So next, our funds are up to 857,000. <laughs> We've got lots from that mission, clearly and uh, 245 science so what missions it give us uh, next explore minmus so that's a land on minmus it sort of moved off the land on uh, the moon uh because we didn't do it first of course but uh this again is quite lucrative to have a nice contract and landing on minmus is not as hard as landing on the moon and of course we've done landing on the moon on land so uh yeah walk on the circuits for minmus as well so that's gonna get more science and uh, that's probably going to be next episode. This episode, we've done an awful lot of sciencing. And if even that's what you use like that in a sentence. Uh, so we can then decide what we want. Now, um, how much is the upgrade to the R&D building? 
Ooh, 902,000. That is quite high. So we're going to need some more missions to upgrade that again, I think. So in the meantime, uh, what can we actually take? Um, well, miniaturization may help for sort of satellites, certainly. Everything else we've pretty much got except landing. So I'm going to take landing. Um, and 155. So we've only got one of these instead of two. So for now, I'm going to take the miniaturizer. What's, what's the next node in? That's the more important one. That's the unmanned satellites, uh, the hex. So I definitely want that at some point. What's the next one in here? Uh, that's the mobile processing lab. That's huge for science. So that's another one that we're going to need as well. And command modules, the Mark 1-3, of course. So, uh, and the lunar excursion module. That is basically the couple version of the real life lunar lander. Uh, but we can get away with a lander can for uh, Minmus. So it doesn't really much matter which one we take of these. I'm going to take miniaturization for now. And we've got 65 science. Of course, we can go back to Minmus to get more science than that. And we will be getting that as part of our next mission, which will be to uh, land on Minmus. Take that. And hopefully you'll join me for the next episode where we do that. In the meantime, thanks as normal for sticking around. Feel free to subscribe, share, like, etc. as you normally would. And as always, thanks for watching.